Hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking and uh, welcome to another episode of Foxy's Fun Inspirational Chats. And today I will be your host. And as one may describe, as, well, as you can see in this little moment of the video, this video is going to be about the continuation of the story time with Foxy episode. And this is the continuation of me reading this story, Mummies in the Morning. As you, one may dare describe, you can see me holding the Mummies in the Morning book itself. And I can remember very, very much, if I may dare try and think back a little, uh, the Patreon. That's Patreon out. And may we continue with the story. It was the strangest cat Jack had ever seen. He was very sleek and dark, with bright yellow eyes and a wide gold collar. It's the Cat in Egypt book, whispered Annie. Just then, the wind started to blow. The leaves began to shake. Here we go, cried Annie. The wind whistled louder. The leaf, the leaf shook harder. Jack closed his eyes as the treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster and faster. Suddenly, everything was still. Absolutely still. Not a sound, not a whisper. Jack opened his eyes. Hot, bright sunlight nearly blinded him. Meow! Jack and Annie looked out of the window. The treehouse was perched on the top of a palm tree. The tree stood with other palm trees, a patch of green surrounded by a sandy desert. Meow! Jack and Annie looked down. The black cat was sitting at the base of the tree. His yellow eyes were staring up at Jack and Annie. Hi! Annie shouted. Shh! said Jack. Someone might hear you. In the middle of the desert, said Annie. The black cat stood and began walking around the tree. Come back, Annie called. She leaned out of the window to see where the cat was. Oh, wow, she said. Look, Jack. Jack leaned forward and looked down. The cat was running away from the palm trees toward a giant pyramid in the desert. A parade was going toward the pyramid, the same parade as in the Egypt book. It's the picture from the book, said Jack. What are those people doing? asked Danny. Jack looked down at the Egypt book. He read the words under the picture. When a royal person died, a grand funeral procession took place. Family, servants and mourners followed the coffin. The coffin was called a sar sarcophagus. It was pulled on a sled by four oxen. It's an Egyptian funeral, said Jack. The box is called a sa 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 Oh, forget it. He looked out of the window again. Oxen, sled, Egyptians, black cat, all were moving in a slow, dreamy way. I'd better make some notes about this, said Jack. He reached into his backpack and pulled out his notebook. Jack always kept notes. Wait, said Jack, and he wrote, Coffin called Sarcophagus. We'd better hurry, said Annie, if we want to see the mummy. She started down the rope ladder. Jack looked up from his notebook. Mummy, he said. There's probably a mummy in that gold box. Annie called up. We're in ancient Egypt, remember? Jack loved mummies. 
He put down his pencil. Goodbye, Jack, called Annie. Wait! Jack called. Mummies! Annie shouted. Oh, man, said Jack weakly. Mummies! She sure knew how to get to him. Jack shoved his notebook and the Egypt book into his backpack. Then he started down the ladder. When he got to the ground, he and Annie took off across the sand. But as they ran, a strange thing happened. The closer they got to the parade, the harder it was to see. Then suddenly it was gone. The, par the strange parade had disappeared, vanished. But the great stone pyramid was still there, towering above them. <sighs> Panting, <sighs> Jack looked around. What had happened? Where were the people? The ox? The guild book? The cat? They're gone, said Annie. Where did they go? Jack said, panting. Maybe they were ghosts, said Annie. Don't be silly. There's no such thing as ghosts, said Jack. It must have been a mirage. A what? Mirage. It happens in the desert all the time, said Jack. It looks like something's there, but it just turns out to be the sunlight reflecting through heat. How could sunlight look like people, a mummy box, and a bunch of cars? said Annie. Jack frowned. Ghosts? she said. No way, said Jack. Look! Annie pointed at the pyramid. Near the base was the sleek black cat. He was standing alone. He was staring at Jack and Annie. He's no mirage, said Jack. The cat started to slink away. He walked along the base of the pyramid and slid around a corner. Where's he going, said Jack. Let's find out, said Annie. They dashed around the corner just in time to see the cat disappear through a hole in the pyramid. Where did he go? said Jack. He and Annie peeked through the hole. They saw a long hallway. Burning torches lit the walls. Dark shadows loomed. Let's go in, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. He pulled out the Egypt book and turned to the section on pyramids. He read the caption aloud. Pyramids were sometimes called Houses of the Dead. They were nearly all solid stone, except for the burial chambers deep inside. Wow! Let's go there. To the burial chambers, said Annie. A better mummy's there. Jack took a deep breath. Then he stepped out of the hot, bright sunlight into the cool, dark pyramid. The hallway was silent. Floor, ceiling, walls, everything was stone. The floor slanted up from where they stood. We have to go farther inside, said Annie. Right, said Jack, but stay close behind me. Don't talk, don't go, just go, said Annie. She gave him a little push. Jack started up the slanting floor of the hallway. Where was the cat? The hallway went on and on. Wait, said Jack. I want to look at the book. He opened the Egypt book again. He held it but there were torch on the wall. The book showed a picture of the inside of the pyramid. The burial chamber is in the middle of the pyramid, see, Jack said. He pointed to the picture. It seems to be straight ahead. Jack tucked the book under his arm. Then they headed deeper into the pyramid. Soon the floor became flat. The air felt different, musty and stale. Jack opened the book again. I think we're almost at the burial chamber. See the picture? The hallway stands up, then it gets flat. 
Then you come to the chamber. See? Look. Eee! A strange cry shot through the pyramid. Jack dropped the Egypt book. Out of the shadows flew a white figure. It swooshed towards them. A mummy. It's alive! Annie shouted. Jack pulled Annie down. The white figure moved swiftly past them, then disappeared into the shadows. A mummy, said Jack, back from the dead. Forget it, stammered Jack. Mummies aren't alive. He picked up the book. What's this, said Annie. She lifted something from the floor. Look, the mummy dropped this thing. It was a gold stick. A foot, about a foot long, a dog's head was carved on one head. Not on one end. It looks like a sceptre, said Jack. What's that? asked Jenny. It's a thing kings and queens carry, said Jack. It means they have power over the people. Come back, mummy, Annie called. We found your sceptre. Come back. We want to help you. Shh, said Jack. Are you nuts? But the mummy, there was no, that was no mummy, said Jack. It was a person, a real person. What kind of person would be inside a pyramid, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe the book can help us. He flipped through the book. At last he found a picture of a person in a pyramid. He read, Tomb robbers often carried off the treasure buried within mummies. False passages were sometimes built to stop the robbers. Jack closed the book. No live mummy, he said, just a tomb robber. Yikes! A tomb robber, said Annie. Yeah, a robber who steals stuff from tombs. But what if the robber comes back, said Annie. We'd better leave. Right, said Jack, but first I want to write something down. He put the Egypt book into his pack. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. He started writing in his book, in his notebook, Tomb Robber. Jack, said Annie. Just a second, said Jack. He kept writing. Tomb robber tried to steal. Jack, look, said Annie. Jack felt a whoosh of cold air. He looked up. A wave of terror went through him. Another figure was moving slowly toward them. It wasn't a tomb robber. No, it was a lady. A beautiful Egyptian lady. She wore flowers in her black hair. Her long white dress had many tiny pleats. Her gold jewellery glittered. Here, Jack, Annie whispered. Give her this. She handed him the gold sceptre. The lady stopped in front of them. Jack held out his sceptre. Held out the sceptre. His hand was trembling. He gasped. The sceptre passed right through the lady's hand. She was made of air. Okay. Well, I think we should stop this for now. But there would, it would certainly be a continuation of the story, almost certainly. Thanks all, everybody, for watching this latest Foxy's Fun Inspirational Chats. Please let you know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I shall certainly see you in the very next video. Ta-ta, another time. From Foxy, it's certainly a most enchanted story. <laughs>